Hi there, welcome back to the Rusty Lathe project. Today we're going to be looking at this compound slide as it were and this is very much a compromise of a compound slide that you might find on a bigger lathe. The reason it's a compromise is because it's only a small lathe and it's a lathe that does drilling and milling via this head here. So this is a compromise in that it's a vice as well as a position for the tool holder to be. So come across, have a look a bit closer and we'll have a look at how this fits onto this cross slide and we'll have a look at some options of other vices that you could directly fit to there and we'll have a look also at a compound slide that would be a lot better idea than this and hopefully I'll be able to get one from somewhere at some point in the future. Come across and have a look, see how we're going on. So this as we know then is the cross slide which, may, which moves across the lathe back and forth at 90 degrees to the work that's held in the chuck. This handle here sends the cross slide backwards and forwards along the length of the lathe and then mounted on the top of here you have this item which can swivel. We can see that the base is staying stationary and this section here is swivelling and here is supposedly some kind of a graduated uh, gradient here on a radius with a pointer on this piece here so you can angle this at specific angles and then you would be able to move this via this threaded section here you could actually move this tool post backwards and forwards to create a cone instead of creating a, a flat surface that, or a cylindrical surface that you would get there you could create a coned surface on that so that would go onto there it would be held in place with these T bolts now I intend to make some longer T bolts because these are not really long enough and the reason why I say that is because if these go into there which is what they should do into this T shape here which is why they call them a T bolt that would go into there and that slot would go under there and then you would tighten that up with the allen key like so and this base would then be securely fastened to this here by a couple of them you'll put one in the other side as well but if needs be you can actually move this thing around that could go into that slot over there by being that way but as as that works along that way and that way there that then becomes very iffy as to whether it's just catching because it could not have a full grip so it would be better if these were longer and then you'd have a better grip under this gap here so these would secure this to this cross slide wherever you might want it to be like that on the underside of the cross slide there are a couple of bolts and those bolts you can tighten the bolts such that this no longer rotates so you would put that down onto there you would position the base plate where you wanted it and tighten it down and then with a spanner you could reach underneath and tension up the nuts that we looked at just a moment ago such that this no longer swivels 
So with this dial around here and with that pointer there, you can set this to run at a particular angle, lock it all in place and then wind the tool backwards and forwards to create your cone as you're cutting tools moving along. The reason I say this is a great compromise is because it's the vice. So if you were drilling something or milling something with this head, you could set something up underneath the cutter and then you could send it across and mill it or drill it as you wanted with the item held in the vise. But if you wanted to create a cone as we were talking about previously, so you were moving this backwards and forwards with the tool post on it, which is locked in place via this bolt in this slot. And again, it's just another version of the T slot that we looked at previously. So that would go into there with your tool mounted in it like that. If you were, that's if you were using the lathe. If you were using the lathe, you would do this setup and you would set this tool on the center height of the workpiece in the lathe perhaps by using small or thicker shims as required to raise the tool post to exactly the height that you wanted. This would lock this tool post down rigidly. The two nuts under there would lock this rigidly. This would lock that rigidly to this, but if you were trying to cut a cone, there is no measurement dial on here whatsoever. So you wouldn't know how far your tool had traveled. And also this tool post wouldn't be overly rigid because it's just on these gibways. The most rigid place for this to be set up is with this jaw locked thoroughly against that jaw, i.e. wound fully in. So to have the most rigid setup, this jaw that that is attached to would be best locked hard against there. That is the best and hardest setup that you could get. But as I say, it's a compromise. So that's where we're at. There are different tool holders such that you don't have to use shims. You can actually raise and lower a section that goes in here which I have on my other slightly larger lathe but only marginally larger than this and the tool then it the tool holder itself would be held in something like that and the tool holder can be manipulated up and down and fixed in a location with the tool in it such that you can quickly take it out and put the tool back in again or a different tool that's preset with the center height matching the center height of the work there for the cutting tool. So that's the principle of this, but as we can see, it is only a very small jaw vise in that it's not a very long gripping piece, but you could remove this and with adaptations to modifications of these you could put different vices onto here and my hope is that I'll be able to change this for a proper compound slide which has got a solidly fixed piece here because with this one you've got that thickness of the jaw there to take into consideration when this is on in that when that is on there 
we're still fighting beyond this space here for our tool so we need to have the for machining you would have the tool as close up as possible within the tool holder but because this is now in the way for some practicalities of machining whatever might be spinning in the lathe you would probably have to have your tool bit sticking further out of this rigid fixing than you would like to because of this arrangement here the compromise so let's have another look at another vice that would fit on here then here's another option of another vice that we could bolt into place using these T slots obviously we'd need to have adapted these for longer screws bigger heads etc washers on etc to hold it in place but that would give us a wider or longer jaw to the vise this again is another option of vise that you could use on there again that gives you a lengthy jaw opening rather than the short jaws and a further vice that could go on with again further modifications to how you fix the vice on you could have a tilting vice so this vice itself can actually tilt up so that you can machine different angles on quite easily so that's another option of vice with this machine you're very limited the bigger the vice you put on you're very limited to the amount of tool stick out that you've got there you can bring the cutter down but on this particular machine there's no bezel on the collar back here to raise the head up on some of these machines where the head meets the lathe bed you can actually raise up the head of this milling machine thereby taking up this chuck so you're very restricted in that manner you could also if you so desired just fix the piece of steel directly to this work bed that would give you a greater distance between the collet or the chuck and the workpiece for your tool to go in and that could be bolted down something like that with a couple of bolts around and clamps fitted on such that you can hold it there and you can use this as your milling face then so that would get you away from having the height of a vice involved of course whilst this machining was being operated the chuck of the lathe would actually be off such that you could get this more directly under the head of this headstock so let's just have a quick look at a better compound slide okay so here's the other compound slide this is a lot better in that it's a more rigid affair entirely again you can swivel it to form a taper and you can measure the length of the taper by using this graduated dial on the end of this bezel so on this one you would know what length of taper you were actually turning and with this one this is a lot better carry on it's not fixed to a, a moving jaw at all the whole thing moves so all of this is quite a solid base for the tool post and this that we can see here is the other type of tool holder that's the tool in the tool holder the tool is clamped into the tool holder with these 
and then the tool holder is clamped to this via this arrangement here and this bit here you can adjust the height of this tool so you can have several of these tool holders on a shelf with different tools fastened in them and it's quick and easy to just change that tool for another tool and then put this tool back in if you wanted to and all your tools would be set to the center height of whatever's in your lathe so that's a lot better setup. Again, here is the pointer on this one and the graduated dial is around here such that we can turn this to whatever angle we want and then that would create the taper. So I'm hoping to replicate this kind of thing on the other little lathe. Let's see how I go on. I'll have to see if I can obtain one from somewhere in the future. So let's go back to the other lathe now and fit that compound slide stroke vice compromise unit. So I'll just move this out of the way. And we'll get this vice onto there like that. Clamp it in with these. One down that side one down the back side that can be tightened into place and i'll just move it so that those T-slots are best suited across there. Remember, I need to make some longer ones so that it's not iffy, iffy where it sits. So with that securely fixed in place now, this can be tightened up with the two nuts under there. And then we can tighten this down with a tool in it at the correct height and away you would go. I'm not aiming for any particular angle here at all. So now that's quite tight. That that we're seeing there is the backlash of this that can be adjusted by that nut that we were looking at earlier with the slot in it and the little screw that goes under there. So we could try and take some of that backlash out. So there you are, then you would alter that to what you wanted with your lathe tool in, noting the overhang so that anything that's spinning round, if you had the jaws that way around, such that if you were working close up to these jaws here, your jaws weren't going to crash into your machine vise before your tool is actually doing its work on the workpiece. So there we are, that would then be fastened on there, ready for operation.
but as we know unless that moving jaw is up against the fixed jaw there is likely to be more wobble in this so you wouldn't get the rigidity that you would hope for out of a compound slide because it's a compromise it's a compound slide and also a vice and when you've tightened your tool into position with these and lock that in place where you want it so you just lock your tool in with all three of them to give it as much rigidity as possible and you would have as little tool overhang as possible and then you would just lock that down and you'd be ready to machine and again whatever spinning in the lathe you would need to note when you're moving it that you're not going to hit this handle with anything so there we are that's the lathe ready for use really with its limitations okay thanks for watching bye for now